decade, the most immediate association with Russia has been, and please finish my sentence. You're right, Vladimir Putin. He's, uh, when you tell someone uh, that I'm from Russia, you in most cases hear, ah, Putin, Putin is the Tsar, strong man, and I have to admit, and many Russians have to admit, that unfortunately, right now here, more or less the only new uh, Russian brand which is recognized in the world. Vladimir Putin is a symbol of power, macht as the Germans put it, a strong man who leads Forbes' latest list of most powerful people in the world. Great job, good marketing and promotion at the expense of lives. But I have one question, why authoritarian, authoritarian leaders, and with no doubt Putin is the one, are often referred to as strong men. What does strength mean in the 21st century? Does it mean cruelty towards political opponents and innocent people, destruction of domestic democratic institutions, extreme fear, I would like to underline it, extreme fear to lose their top positions and destabilization of other countries and war in Ukraine? The leading philosophy on which the Western civilization has been built upon for the last decades after World War II is humanity, where a person, not a state, is in the center. Human rights in Russia remain an empty declaration and not a common practice. In fact, common practice is exactly the opposite, and this is a large-scale, state-sponsored, desperate fight with people who are critical of the government and its policies. If you raise your voice, be prepared to get beaten by the police, get toxic acid in your face, be put in prison, and be killed. Behind my back, you see a graph that illustrates best the situation in Russia. Enemies of Russian state, the number has grown dramatically since 2003. It has grown 28 times. And this is an official resource, official source, Russian Supreme Court Justice Department. But despite this repression, Russians do not give up. Thousands of Russians take to streets to protest against corruption, against unlawful renovation, and against newly introduced taxes. They stand in one-man protests to support prisoners of conscience. They write investigative reports to reveal massive cases of corruption. And they initiate law cases against publishing houses where the owners try to influence editorial policies. Russians show resistance, hence courage, civil courage. Civil courage means being a citizen, not a subject, no matter how hard the governmental pressure is. Without civil courage, no change is possible. In this group, there is no need to explain what civil courage means, because you all come from authoritarian or semi-authoritarian countries. But it's very difficult to explain to my German friends what courage means. They actually understand the term, but it's very far away from them. They don't have any limitations to protest against government or to criticize governmental policies. It goes in striking contrast with Russians, where a citizen from his childhood feels that it's safer to keep silence. Fear is the weapon of any authoritarian regime, and civil courage is something that can ruin a dictatorship. It should be supported and nourished in any country, and also in democracies, to contain uh, authoritative trends. When I think of my father, Boris Nemtsov, 
who was killed more than two years ago in front of the Kremlin walls, I think of his incredible courage. He chose the most difficult path in his life, and it was peaceful civil resistance. He said that it would be a long way, a marathon, as he put it, not a sprint, to bring democratic change in Russia. The Boris Nemtsov Foundation, created in honor of my father, each year recognizes one person who shows exceptional courage in fighting for democratic rights in Russia. The first winner was Lev Schlossberg, a regional politician and a journalist who was the first one to report about killed Russian soldiers in the eastern part of Ukraine. And he himself was subsequently violently beaten on his way home. This year winner is Eldar Dadin. He was the first one to receive a real term prison for one man protests, and he was tortured in prison. He was released before the end of the term due to unprecedented public pressure. But the Boris Nemtsov Prize has a lot more to it than winners. It facilitates discussion about the scale of political persecution in Russia, courageous men and women, and the necessity to support these people. Each year, the ceremony, I have a dream. And this dream is that next year, Russians would not need civil courage. And instead, they would need qualifications, skills, and expertise to implement reforms in my country. And Russia would have better brands than Putin. And this will truly make Russia stronger.